to the vlog. I woke up around like 5.30 p.m. Um, again, my body being like, you must sleep 12 hours. I don't know why it does that. Woke up and I was laying in bed for a few minutes and then I turned onto my side, my left side, and in my shoulder and the back of my neck and into the back of my skull, I just heard cracking, crunching. And I was like, mm. And I couldn't move and it was just so painful that I just laid there and I was like I'm gonna have to wait for my sister to come home so that she can help me like I'm not gonna be able to move uh, my sister's been working from home for this whole quarantine but for the past week she's been having to go out because work duty calls I was like it's 5 30 she'll probably be coming around home around 6 and like I didn't know what to do but I was like no I need to walk my dog and yeah it was so painful uh, so I've been laying in my bed I don't know what to do uh, do I like go get a neck brace tomorrow or should I not be moving at all? Should I not even? In? I feel like I'm really bad with figuring out what I need to do when I hurt myself. Like when I got this burn from oil, grease, hot stuff. Um, it like splashed up, hit me and I didn't know what to do. I was like, it's fine, I'm fine. And then later on, my friend told me that I should have run my hand under cold water to bring out the heat. But anyways, so I don't know what to do now. Do I like put a hot pack or an ice pack on it? But that's how my life is going right now. So yeah, just about nothing else is going on in life. Goodbye. Sweaty, but I wear my mask and you better be wearing your mask too. Okay?
let's have some chats before the sun goes down i've been doing more q a type sections in my vlogs to incorporate more talking um because i don't ever have anything to update you on because i'm in quarantine and nothing changes mm, i do have to re-register for classes next week and i'm stressed because i don't know what to do <laughs> But anyways, I asked you guys on Instagram stories for questions since I'm, that's where I'm answering getting these questions from. How do you keep your stuff for journaling, paper, stickers, other materials organized? I use Muji boxes, so they're like, what's it called? Paul, poly acrylic uh little cube rectangular containers to keep papers and things and stickers i know a lot of people use binders for stickers but if i ever did that with my stickers i would never use them but those are for like sticker sheets but then for like little individual stickers i use this like jewelry like beads kind of thing container i think that's what the label said um they're from the dollar store and they work really well for holding my individual stickers yeah my papers i put all in the muji square box things and i don't it's all like in my head like if you looked at it you'd be like this is so unorganized like this makes no sense but for me it makes a lot of sense i know exactly where everything is in my whole entire room too like it might look very messy and like i have a lot of stuff and unorganized but my room is very organized i know exactly where everything is so it makes it a little bit hard to explain how i organize stuff so like pens that i use regularly they sit on my desk and emoji like pen holder ignore my trash can but this whole like underneath the desk is a uh drawer and so it's all like separated into different parts and i know where everything is and it works very well for me um but i know that when i get more stuff then i'll have to like change things alter things it's constantly changing because i get more things please take my credit card away from me but it does help i guess when uh stores raise their prices and i'm like i respect you as an artist but i'm not gonna pay so much for a sticker sheet i'm sorry so i've been trying to not buy so many supplies because sometimes i feel uninspired and i'm like i just need new things but like i know that i need to just work through it and use what i have and then it'll work out better so anyways have you ever dated someone i have not i've never had a boyfriend um i'm not terribly sad about it because i know that i my time will eventually come there will be somebody out there that will make me comfortable um and not feel like a like a, a dreaded process to go on a date with someone because just thinking about it i'm like that's just so much work to like go on a date and like get to know someone and be social like just not right now in life so i'm perfectly happy with my state in life <laughs> I feel like I put more importance on friends and experiencing things with my friends right now. So that's not something that I'm like super stressed about or feel like I need to like go on dates and like need to meet new people. Not right now. I'm talking beach, get lost. Rocky, you okay with this? Okay, how frequently do you journal it fluctuates a lot and i think that's important to for me at least to feel like i don't have to like do it on a schedule because it's something for me as i always repeat that my journal is something for me and myself and if i don't journal for a little while that's okay because i didn't want to and i don't want to force myself to do something and then result in something that i think is hideous and then later on i'm like Ugh, why did i waste my time doing that sometimes i feel like i want to push myself into like just doing it so that I can get through whatever block I'm having or whatever it may be. I just journal when I feel like it and that's okay. I journal at least once every month, but because I like journaling, it's normally like pretty easy to just journal consistently. Some days I do tons of pages in one day. Some days I don't do journaling for a week. I think it's been about a week since I last journaled, which is kind of a long time. But recently I've been having a little bit of like difficulties because in the beginning of the year, I was really, my journaling style was me journaling things that i would do during the day and like the little scraps of like receipts that i would pick up and so it made journaling really easy plus all the aesthetic things and then when quarantine happened it was like i could only do aesthetic things like nothing much was happening for me to document so it was kind of hard for that adjustment it's still kind of hard right now so i haven't been journaling that much yeah anyways it, i just i think it's very important to not put pressure on myself because then it's just not gonna it's not healthy it's not gonna come out turn out good stuff you know do you listen to any Hispanic artists like Maluma, J Balvin, etc.? I do. Um, not not so much in my own time, but mostly like when I'm hanging out with people, like my family or my friends. But yeah, I like grew up with all those songs because Belize is Latin America and the Caribbean, so a lot of influences, a lot of nostalgia. I was little. My sister was playing one on her phone just earlier, and I was like, Ooh, all the feelings. And my mom loves Maluma. Okay, every mom loves Maluma. Also, we're Mayan, not Hispanic, so 
just in case you were wondering. Which do you like, Mark Morton, Dream, or 127? I like Mark. I just, whatever he does, I support him. And I think he does well in any group because that's just the kind of like person, the artist that he is, adaptable. And the thing with NCT is that NCT is a whole. I'm an OT21 fan, as you know, hopefully you remember this. So I support all of NCT. And I feel like all of NCT is pretty cohesive with each other. So I don't really feel like a huge difference. Obviously, Mark is a little bit more like leadery in what Dream. I love him in everything. I support him in everything. Also, I catch him because he goes between 127 and Dream. So yeah. Favorite JCC slash NCT daily video. My favorite JCC, <sighs> man. Maybe my favorite JCC is when Mark and Johnny did flying yoga. The visuals in that one, <laughs> am I right? And my favorite NCT daily are probably all of the 24 hour relay videos. It's just love, I love it. What can I say, you know, just no words. <laughs> having feelings for someone but not having it reciprocated. I think it, it's important to remember just because you don't like somebody or they like you and you don't like them back or they don't like you back, that's okay because nobody is entitled to like you or you like them just because one person likes the other. You know, that sounds very weird and convoluted. But if it's made clear that one person doesn't like the other, then like what can you do you know and you don't want to force somebody to like someone else because then i just personally i feel like that wouldn't be very genuine and i wouldn't want to live like that and it'll probably hurt but literally like time is just time is so beautiful as time passes you're just gonna forget about it and it's not gonna be so bad and then maybe probably one day you're gonna be like mm yeah no so there are just some things like that that are that's just how the way that they're it's gonna be and if you really care about the person if you're friends then it shouldn't matter if they like you back in that type of way um in order to keep them in your life because you still enjoy knowing them i've had a lot of experiences in the past where I've been good, very good friends with guys and I'm like, oh my gosh, yay. Have actually a platonic guy friend because a lot of like the thing in Belize growing up was like guys and girls weren't really friends and if they were together then they were like, they liked each other. So throughout life I was always like very excited when I felt like I had a a uh, platonic guy friend. I felt very happy and content because I'm like, this is how it should be. Guys and girls are just being friends and not having to have any romantic feelings towards each other. But then it would turn out that they liked me and in all honesty, I probably didn't handle it very well, but they also got very hurt and they didn't want to like even talk to me afterwards. So I have this like very big feeling of like, I'm not entitled to like anybody back just because they like me. Like it's such a privilege that they liked me so I should like them back. But you can't control anybody's feelings. Just like the people that I've had crushes on that haven't liked me back that's okay because they probably have valid reasons or just don't care so that's perfectly okay too sorry the light is going should have filmed this earlier probably but now was the right time okay just not lighting wise your peak Aquarius behavior <sighs> I'm very much an Aquarius. Uh, my friend Emma Green is also very much an Aquarius, but we are very different Aquariuses. So we're at like this separate ends of the spectrum of Aquariuses, but I'm very Aquarius in people telling me what to do. And then I'm like, actually, I'm going to do the opposite of what you just told me to do because you told me what to do. So are you excited for the new XOSC comeback? I was very excited. I feel like it happened so quickly though. And I'm like, it's already over so sad but my favorite song is say it i keep freaking listening to that song over and over and over again please save me from myself um and i also really like on me and telephone i always forget to mention telephone because that one came out a little bit earlier so good enjoy it so much your thoughts on the king eternal monarch sorry if i missed it already i started watching the first episode but then the like parallel times really stressed me out because i really don't like things like that but i really want to watch it because the main actor in it is the guy from Airs, which was the first K-drama that I ever watched. And the girl in it is from Goblin, and I love Goblin with all my heart. So I really want to watch it, so I'm going to really try one of these days to, like, actually bear through the parallel universe thing. Like, I just don't like it. I don't like parallel times or time travel. That's just like a no for me. And I also want to watch It's Okay to Not Be Okay because the actor in that is one of my favorite K-drama actors. Um, and I've been waiting for him to come out of the army and now here he is and he has a K-drama. But like, I think that show would stress me out a lot. But I don't know. <laughs> okay, last question. It's so hot in here and the light is really, really going. How would you know if a friend is toxic? It's kind of hard to know. Sometimes it's like very like obvious, like this person's very toxic or this friendship is very toxic. But sometimes it's kind of hard. You're like, oh, but you can find reasons for like why this might be or that might be. I can only speak from my experience. I had a friendship in the past. I wouldn't say like our friendship was very toxic. We had good times. We watched out 
out for each other equally and, and they felt like a true friend but I felt like more so the person was toxic and had toxic behaviors and during that time I wasn't who I am today so I didn't know how to like deal with that or be like no you shouldn't say that i love you love yourself you know and as a result their toxic behavior and habits like rubbed off on me in a way and like amplified my already uh, toxic behavior that was there and just kind of made it worse and so everything just got really toxic and when somebody's going through something like that and being toxic you either have to decide that's something that they have to work out on their own you can't help or you can be there for them and really try to help them through it but don't push them too hard because that's not going to help anything or you just got to like focus on yourself and work on yourself because if you yourself aren't 100% there then it's going to be really hard to help other people and I know it's hard to like let go of people or prioritize yourself over other people but you have to be healthy for yourself that's most important yourself is most important so yeah anyways hopefully that helped somewhat hopefully any of these questions helped <laughs> that's it the sun is gone goodbye <laughs>